space, the ultimate frontier. In a world as diverse and spread out as ours, the problem of how to transmit information over vast distances quickly, efficiently, and economically has become the ultimate challenge. Since the mid-60s, the primary method of sending information over vast distances has revolved around the linking of computer resources together into a global telecommunications network. Meeting the ever-increasing needs of business and government for fast, accurate, and secure data transfer in a wide range of applications remains a top priority throughout the international community. The arrangement that works best for a variety of users, both business and individual alike, has turned out to be a public data network. And while the public data networks provide the gateways through which all this happens, the key to the networks is the universal communications protocol known as X25, the most reliable method yet developed to assure that the message you send will be received exactly as you intended. Hello, I'm Jerry Johnson. I'll be your host for this course. Like people, communications between computers are governed by certain codes or standards of behavior. We call these standards protocols. The protocol we're going to talk about in this training module is known as X25. An international recommendation, X25 governs the rules that allow your data terminal, or my PC, to communicate through a network to any other computer or data terminal connected to the network. Before we can fully appreciate where the X25 protocol fits into the scheme of things, though, we first need to understand something about the telecommunications technique known as packet switching. That's because X25 has had a very strong influence in the rapid growth of packet switch communications networks throughout the world. By now, you may be wondering, what's a packet? And why use a network? Why not communicate directly to the terminal of your choice? Well, by using a network, especially a packet switching network, you can transfer information more efficiently, without errors, and at much lower cost than a message switch line like voicemail or a circuit switch telecommunication system like the telephone. Though packet switching is currently used primarily for computer data communications, its potential is so promising that eventually you should be able to use a packet switch network for transmitting voice, video, or any other electronic form of communications. In addition to allowing efficient utilization of all those miles of expensive copper wiring, packet switching offers several special features, like closed user groups and reverse charging, that make it the medium of choice whenever you need to communicate over a great distance with speed, accuracy, and economy. You wonder what makes all this possible? Quite simply, it's using a powerful computer, a device which can process millions of calculations in a split second, as nothing more than a simple switch. Because studies have shown that data processing is relatively cheap compared to the high cost of data transmission, it is much more efficient and makes good economic sense to share resources and be connected to a communications network. Computers and other data terminals connect to the nearest local switch or node in the network by means of local access lines. The network switches are connected to each other by trunk lines. Whenever you send some information down the line to your local node, that data is properly addressed, coded, sequenced, and packaged into precisely sized bundles of binary data known as packets. These specially formatted bundles of information are then routed to their destination through any one of the other switches in the network according to availability. Communications networks which are available to the public are known as public data networks. When such systems rely on packet switching technology, as more and more are, we call them packet switched networks. For our purposes in this overview on X25 protocol, we're not so interested in the data exchange that occurs within the network itself. We're more interested in what occurs at the interface between an X25 packet switching network and an X25 terminal. Since an X25 terminal is designed to operate in the packet mode, it can communicate directly with an X25 network 
and is therefore known as a packet mode device. For those computers and terminals which do not operate in the packet mode, an intermediary device known as a packet assembler disassembler, or PAD, is required to translate commonly used communications protocols to the recommended X25 standard and establish compatibility with the network. The packet assembler disassembler, or PAD, assembles data into packets for entry into the network and disassembles packets from the network into the protocol understood by your equipment. In either case, whether you communicate directly through an X25 terminal or whether you require a PAD, our emphasis in this training module is on the interface. The interface is the place where X25 protocols come into focus. That's where X25 makes all this packet switching happen in a big way. First ratified in 1976 by a United Nations subcommittee called the Consultative Committee for International Telephone and Telegraph, or CCITT for short, X25 is the international recommendation which defines the interface specifications between an end user's data terminal equipment, or DTE, and the network's data circuit terminating equipment, or DCE. X25, then, defines the relationship between your X25 speaking terminal or your computer terminal with a pad and the switch. Your DTE could be a very fast, very intelligent computer capable of processing several programs at once while also maintaining many conversations with an X25 network. It could be an X25 terminal capable of speaking directly to an X25 network. It could be a pad designed specifically to perform the protocol conversion between a broad variety of non-packet mode terminals and an X25 packet switching network. It could be a smart computer, like a PC, or it could be a dumb, asynchronous terminal. In many cases, the network's DCE will be another type of network processor, specially designed to switch packets and direct them through the nodes to their proper destination. Governing the interface between an X25 speaking DTE and an X25 speaking DCE, X25 protocol regulates the format, meaning, and timing of all information exchanged across the access link. Corresponding to the protocol hierarchy established by the International Standards Organization, X25 has three distinct levels. The physical level, the link control or frame level, and the packet level. Each level functions independently, and modifications made on one level will not affect the operations of another. The lowest level, the physical level, defines the physical, mechanical, and electrical characteristics required to establish a point-to-point -point synchronous circuit between the DTE and the DCE. At this physical level, X25 specifies size and type of plug used, pin connections, voltage levels, and the control signals to be exchanged. The second level, called the link control or frame level, has the responsibility to make sure that the information is transmitted across the link without errors. In order to achieve this goal of error-free transmission, the link level packages the user's information into frames, which contain address fields to direct the information to the proper destination, frame check sequences to detect errors and correct them at every step of the transmission, and control fields to make sure that frames are sent and received in the proper sequence, that frames do not get lost in the network, and that no frame gets duplicated. If a control field detects an error, for example, a packet gets lost or damaged in the network, another frame, identical to the lost frame, is retransmitted. The frame check sequence checks for integrity and completeness in the communication. Should an error be detected, a correct frame will be retransmitted. The flags at the beginning and end of a frame consist of a unique set of zeros and ones that make for a very distinct and recognizable boundary. By placing a user's information within these carefully defined frames, the link level achieves four major goals. The transfer of data efficiently and quickly, synchronization between the sender and the receiver, the detection and recovery of errors, the identification and reporting of procedural errors. The third layer, known as the packet level, 
is the level where X25 really makes a contribution to efficient control of information to the network. When you wish to exchange information, the packet level sends a call request packet through the network's DCE to the intended destination. If the incoming call is accepted, an end-to-end -end circuit is established that is known as a switched virtual circuit. Like a telephone call, a switched virtual circuit is temporary. It exists as a logical entity only for the duration of the call. The call itself is designated a virtual call because despite the fact that the call can get routed through any number of intervening nodes in the network, the communication link operates just as if you would actually call the other person directly with no switches to relay your message along the way. During the virtual call, your data is placed in information frames according to the network's maximum number of bytes allowed per packet and sent as data packets through one of the network's links. Each link in a network can potentially carry up to 4,096 full duplex channels, each one identified by a logical channel number for the duration of the virtual call. The packet level assures proper flow of data throughout the network by assigning sequence numbers to each packet sent. The packet level also prevents flooding by not sending more packets than the network's window size or buffer can handle at any one time. To make absolutely sure that the information was received intact, the packet level demands an acknowledgement within a certain period of time or else it will retransmit another copy of that particular data packet. No data is destroyed until the sender receives an acknowledgement that the information was received without errors. Besides the three lower levels which comprise the X25 protocol, there are four higher level protocols which also play an important part in allowing your data terminal to interface with a network. Taken as a whole, these four higher levels supervise the interaction between the two end users to assure end-to-end -end flow of complete, error-free messages. Basically, the higher level protocols take your raw digital information and pass it on to the X25 levels for appropriate packetizing. In passing data to the lower levels, each of the four higher levels adds its own header to make sure, for example, that the two end users are speaking the same language and that the message will be delivered not just to the pad, but all the way beyond the pad to the correct destination terminal at the other end. The output of the higher levels then becomes the input of the lower levels. This input gets transmitted to the network DCE across the physical link in the form of clearly addressed, specially formatted packets containing the information you want to communicate. The packet switching network then dynamically routes your information to its destination through the switched virtual circuit temporarily established for this particular connection. When the information exchange is completed, the packet level hangs up the phone by sending a call clear packet. The temporary switched virtual circuit is now clear. The distinguishing logical channel number returns to the network pool for another assignment. And both ends of the switched virtual circuit are placed in a ready state to be available for another virtual call. X25 allows the kind of system that more and more manufacturers are implementing. The protocol is universally accepted as the recommended standard for interfacing intelligent host computers to packet switching networks. And the beauty of it is, you don't even have to be a large, powerful computer to access one of these networks. X25 protocols work for personal computers, for so-called dumb terminals, and for other asynchronous terminals as well. In such cases, the network provides an additional interface known as a pad, which translates non-X25 data into X25 speaking data. And that X25 compatible data can then be passed on to the X25 packet switching network. Okay, you've just received quite a packet of information in this introductory video section, and it's nearly time to send you to the workbook. Before you turn off the videotape and go to Module A of the workbook for some additional details, look over this list of key concepts. Keep them in mind as you read Module A of the workbook. At the end of Module A, you'll be asked 10 questions as a review exercise to help you master the material. The answers to those questions are all contained in this list. 
When you have completed the review exercises for Module A, go on to the Knowledge Review videotape for the correct answers and for a preview of Module B. Please turn off the monitor and rewind this tape back to the beginning now.